Welcome back to Seek a Psychology. This week we're going to talk about why squatting in front of a mirror is a terrible idea. When you go to your normal commercial gym, there's usually a mirror in front of the squat cages. There's a lot of the time mirrors in front of deadlift platforms or weightlifting platforms. Those mirrors do not help you to learn the movement any better. But oftentimes people still like to rely on them almost like a crutch to see are they hitting depth? Is their posture correct? What does the level of exertion look like? This can actually be damaging for you when you're learning a movement or it can slow down the learning of that movement and its efficacy due to the fact that you're relying then on visual feedback instead of ingraining really effective proprioceptive feedback loops and basically forming this kind of cognitive model for what a squat will feel like, for what a deadlift will feel like, or whatever exercise or motor skill will feel like. So when you talk about the feeling of a movement, right? When you sit down from a chair, stand up from a chair, you don't often think about like, how does that movement feel like in space? You don't give it any conscious thought. Usually you just spin around and sit your ass down on the chair. That's because your level of cognition around that and your motor skill learning around sitting down and standing up is incredibly well ingrained. So what you have there is you have a host of these kind of proprioceptive feedback sensors within you. So everything from the skin on the bottom of your feet all the way through to muscle spindles, Golgi apparatus, all these things within our body which allow us to understand where we are in space, they allow us to understand how fast we're moving, how much force is going through each of our muscles, they allow us to see the friction we have at the floor, all of these things are hugely valuable when we're doing a normal movement and we've no idea that it's actually going on. So when we then bring ourselves into a gym setting or a training setting and we're doing something like a back squat, I'll refer to this as you being a learner, right? But in essence, everybody's a learner. Our system itself is constantly dynamic, right? So if I lose a kilo, gain a kilo, if the weight gets heavier, if the weight gets lighter, all of these things change the movement. And therefore, just because you've been lifting weights for five years or you've squatted for five years doesn't mean you're no longer a learner in terms of the actual motor skill of squatting. You will constantly be getting better and so you constantly need to be looking at kind of developmental psychology and looking at the importance of these things. So when I'm talking about the importance of these things, how big of an impact is it going to have and why is visual feedback or what I'll refer to as real-time visual feedback of where you are in space bad for you? Okay, I talked about kind of nerve signals or proprioception earlier. So proprioception and nerve signals basically is like a sensor on the end of your hand. Every time your hand touches something, you get a nerve signal coming back up to your brain and says, my hand has now touched this. If I hold this pen out in front of me, I will grab that pen and I will understand that I've grabbed that pen because I've gotten a nerve signal from my skin all the way back to my brain, which says I have now touched the pen. If I didn't have any sensory organs on the end of my hands or on my skin, when I would touch the pen, I would have to look and see are my fingers on the pen, and then I would hope when I leave go of my other hand that I have grasped this pen effectively. If I didn't have those afferent nerve signals, so the nerves that are coming from the sensory organ back into our nervous system, I would constantly rely on visual feedback. And there are people with this disease or this disorder where that area of their nervous system gets fried and they constantly have to look at everything they're doing. So if they are picking up a pen, they are looking at the pen, they grab their hand with it, they bring the pen up, and then even when they're walking, they're looking at their feet as they're walking. Obviously, this is incredibly ineffective. And if you're an athlete and you're learning to do a squat, as the example, you cannot rely on visual feedback all the time. So we have this whole host of sensors. We have this system that's primed for learning. So then why would we want real-time visual feedback to kind of muddy the waters or to be relying on it more? When we look at certain tasks or when we look at placebo-controlled trials where people are learning things, it's very, very clear that a real-time visual feedback is a crutch that learners will rely on. It's also clear that the longer they have visual feedback before that visual feedback is taken from them, the more they will rely on it. So they don't ever develop this kind of proprioceptive feedback loop. They don't ever develop um, the understanding or the cognitive model for what that movement feels like. 
They just always rely on the visual feedback. So if you're going to squat in front of a mirror forever, and the only place you'll ever need to do a squat is in front of a mirror, then is it harmful? I don't know. That's up to you. Realistically, for athletes, you're not learning how to squat to be just better at squatting in the gym. You're learning how to squat to be more effective at your sport. You want to be stronger in everyday life. You want to be able to do a squat if it's in catching a barbell, if it's in tackling somebody, or if you want to be a more powerful runner. So in essence, when you're squatting in front of a mirror, you're turning off all the other proprioceptive feedback loops that you could be learning from. You could be forming this really good kind of three-dimensional model for what a squat is. And instead, you're just relying on this screen that's in front of you and seeing, okay, my knees are caving in, I need to push my knees out. My hips haven't gone low enough, I need to sink lower. Jeez, it looks like I'm really red in the face and purple. I'm going to use less weight next time or I'm going to brace more effectively next time. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you train in front of a mirror in your gym and that's the only squat cage they have, you're in a bit of a pickle because closing your eyes isn't good. Like you, Even when we train without a mirror, we still want visual feedback. We want depth of field. We want to understand where our head is in relation to our horizon point. But what can you do? Well, the main thing is don't pay attention to those feedback markers. Don't be looking at your knees as they're caving in. Don't look for the depth of the squat in the mirror. Don't look for perceived levels of exertion within the face or the upper body. Instead, pick a point. So even if you're squatting, that point might be uh, slightly down lower, depending if it's a low bar or high bar squat. If it was high bar, we might want the head slightly higher. You can pick a point in that mirror and not pay attention to the visual feedback you might get if you were kind of looking more straight on. You could also narrow your point of attention. So it might be a thing of picking the logo on your shirt and picking a particular point in that logo and then really focusing on that for the entire time. If you're not in that case, if you're not constrained by a gym that only has squat stands in front of a mirror, I would say stay as far away from real-time visual feedback as possible. Make that really, really in-depth understanding of your squat as good as possible make that cognitive model I talked about earlier as deep and as three-dimensional as possible. And then the last thing is rely on visual feedback, but not in real time. So ask a coach to watch you and see you hitting depth. Get your phone out and video it and review it after your session. You can do all these things that are really, really simple, but they won't limit your learning or they won't force that learning curve to be much, much longer. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Most of the stuff we got for today was from a book and that skill acquisition in sport. It's by Williams and Hodges or Williams and Hedges as far as I know. There's also a journal article that's quite good on this and that is teaching proper technique in the squat exercise through psychological modeling. It's by Dr. Katina and as far as I know it's in Athletic Insights. So it's like an online psychology journal or an online sports psychology journal. If you've any questions on this video or if you've other psychology videos that you'd like to see covered, please put them in the comments below. We really appreciate just any comments, any kind of liking the video, subscribing. It really does help us out and we'll try and pop up another video every day. Thank you.